Okay, so uh, by now you've probably gotten a couple of spectra. I wanted to show you a little bit about the software that you've got to use in order to do some uh, very basic analysis. Um, right here you've got uh, a spectrum that I took of Vega years ago, back in 2001, in October of 2001. And you can see that I labeled it Vega Grism 4 seconds uh, at negative 15 centigrade B. Wow, because it really is a good spectrum. It's one of the, the better ones. This was taken through a 106 millimeter diameter telescope, which is pretty small. Um, so a four second exposure. You'll also see that it's somewhat elongated vertically. And that is because I turned the telescope drive off for four seconds to allow the star to drift vertically along the right ascension axis uh, just for that time span. And you can see um, that the absorption lines are quite, quite visible. And I have the information window open over there. And if I put my mouse over the, the spectrum, you can see that uh, maximum pixel values are in the 20,000 range, 24,000 range. And as it gets fainter, they drop down to about 5,000 or so. This is pretty much uh, an ideal spectrum of the star. And if we were to open up uh, the screen stretch window and like really stretch it out, you can see that uh, there are a couple of other objects in there that you can see um, that have provided spectra as well. And we'll just ignore those for this discussion, okay? Now that's all fine and dandy. Um, if you wanted to export this uh, using Maxim DL, you certainly can. Uh, literally just draw a box around the uh, spectrum that you have and then um, in your graph window as before you just hit the export button and then you're allowed to save that off as a uh, I would save it off as a comma separated value and that can be opened in Excel and plotted in Excel okay so that's something you can do you also have uh, RSpec which is uh, the software that was designed primarily for spectroscopy and I've opened that same image here and you can see that it's a little bit smaller and uh, once you've opened it uh, by the way the open buttons down here just like click on it and I'll bring it into view here uh, select the file that you want to open and click open and it, and it opens you see these two horizontal lines the orange lines they just put your mouse in there click and drag and drag uh, that to a point where it wraps around the spectrum and you can see over here it's already plotted intensity versus pixel position which is kind of handy and this this intense peak here is the star and this is your spectrum if you drag the bottom of uh, that selection window that area to just the bottom of the uh, spectrum you can then grab the top at least I think you can grab the top and maybe you have to grab the bottom in this particular software. There's a way to make these thinner. You grab the top and, and pull it down and make it thinner. And that way you're excluding more of the background sky. And to a point where you've got the spectrum readily visible. And if you want to zoom in to see that better, there's a little uh, zoom button up here that allows you to uh, slowly migrate uh, those orange lines so you can precisely select uh, what you want okay so now here's your here's your spectrum here's your zero order image and here's your spectrum of, of Vega not bad okay so now at this point you probably are wondering how do we calibrate this for wavelengths um, for um, true spectroscopy uh, the software makes it really easy to do so. Our spec is built for that. It's really kind of cool. If you go uh, over here to the right hand side, there's a calibrate button. And um, it wants you to select two points. Uh, this is a fairly linear solution, so I wouldn't worry about nonlinear solutions just yet. That's a little bit more advanced. Um, there are two very obvious hydrogen bomber lines here. Um, which we can use. We can use hydrogen alpha and hydrogen beta. The software wants to start with uh, the left hand side and work out to the right. The left hand side is violet, the right hand side is red. So we're going to operate 
uh, with the assumption that you've rotated to the right um, and that your uh, the, the primary star image is on the left and uh, the, the red side of the spectrum is over here on the right hand side. Um, after a while you get really good at this so don't worry if uh, you can't follow along just at this stage of the game but you will get to a point where you start identifying spectral lines pretty easily. Um, so the software highlights in yellow the first field of interest and this is the hydrogen uh, right here. I'm going to put my mouse over it. A number comes up. It says 441.0 and I'm going to click on it and it enters 441 up here for you. Then you have to type in 486.1 which happens to be the hydrogen beta lines wavelength in nanometers and then um, once you've done that tab on down to uh, find uh, another line in this case the hydrogen alpha line I'm going to click on it it enters 542 for the pixel position and then the hydrogen alpha line is 656 point uh, say 3.3 nanometers uh, at point now you can just say apply and as you've applied it and you can close the window now um, as you move around you can identify other lines and so this one says 433 that happens to be um, gamma hydrogen gamma and then uh, the delta line shows up over here you can also see some other interesting features like this dip right here uh, out at 760 uh, nanometers uh, that is your uh, atmosphere that's actually water in your atmosphere it's called the telluric line t-e-l-l-u-r-i-c telluric line and that will show up in all of your observations of all objects and will always be at 760 or so nanometers and it's caused by water in your atmosphere and h2o the molecule has its own spectrum uh, so there it is now you know what to look for so uh, it will not redshift by the way or blue shift uh, because it's part of your planet so there you have it. There's the basics on using our spec. Hope that helps. Clear skies.